We are here with Daphne Oz, and today we're going to be talking about pretty much everyone's favorite subject, I think, <laughs> grilled cheeses. <laughs> so, I mean, everybody loves a grilled cheese, right? This is not a hard sell. It's not a hard sell. Honestly, everyone I've been talking to about grilled cheeses, everybody has that food memory from when they were kids, the way mom used to make it, what bread did she use, what cheese did she use, how did she cut it, how, what did it smell like, what were they doing, what kitchen were they in, what tablecloth was there. I mean, literally, yeah. it's crystallized in their child brain of, of how they used to enjoy grilled cheeses. And I think every time you have a grilled cheese now as an adult, it takes you right back there. And it's such a fun food to eat. Um, but what we're seeing more and more are chefs are picking up that classic comfort food and they're updating it and making it really fresh and really fun and very gourmet and adult in a way that's still super easy to make at home, right. but just you know takes that food you love and amps it up to another level. Right, and so I think for a lot of people it's like, okay, well, you know, I love this cheese or I love that cheese, but are there certain things that you can do to make it better, you know, with the bread, with the temperature of the pan, like there's all these like little things because it's so simple yes. that you can really make it better. That's absolutely true. There, you want to make it with me? Should we yeah. do a grilled, grilled cheese action? Who doesn't? Um, want to so make the first thing, cheese. obviously, you got to choose the bread that you love. And I, everyone who sees me on the chew knows I'm a big fan of my health food, and I want it to be, I want it to taste delicious, and I'm healthy and happy. That's my whole balance that I do. Um, but but I also want it to be indulgent. Like I need plenty of room for the things that I love and indulge in, so I don't ever feel deprived. Yep. But that means like when I take a grilled cheese, I want it to be everything I have, you know, my, my real cheese, all my little fixings, I love it. But I might choose a healthier bread, like a whole grain bread. Right. Um, and this one that we're using here, it's, it's a whole grain that actually has a lot of pull and chew to it. So it's a great, uh, it's a great flavor addition, I find, to the sandwich too. Right. And does size matter? Does the Thickness. texture of it? The thi yeah, because you don't See, want it to like spread ratios. out too much. Yeah, the ratios. We're going back to math class. Ratios mm -hmm. are really important, yeah. I think, for the right kind of grilled cheese sandwich. You need to have the right balance of cheese to bread. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't do any thicker than these, which are about, you know, three quarters finger, of an inch, yeah. maybe a finger. That, perfect. Yeah. That's a, that's, I love using your, your body parts right, as you're measurements. Like, oh, this is good. <laughs> that's about yeah. right. Uh, Don't go too far. And you know, if you think about eating two of them, that's a pretty thick sandwich right there. Right. So nothing too much, too much more than that. Mm -hmm. Another trick that I love to use is most people will spread butter onto their bread or throw it in the yeah. pan before they get cooking. I like to use mayonnaise. Mayonnaise mm -hmm. has some egg in it, so when it goes in the pan, it gets extra deep, dark, golden brown as that egg cooks, and it makes it a little bit of a sweeter, and it gives it a sweeter taste, and it gives it its own flavor, which I think you know, if every layer of your sandwich adds flavor right. to it, you're getting that much closer to, to the golden. Different. The golden hour. Um, okay, so you're gonna go with a little bit of mayonnaise on the outside of your bread, and I'm gonna do that for you because we only have one little spreader guy. And uh, not too much, right? Like not this too is, much. You don't want to go again. It's well, not too far. Remember, because it has that egg in it, it's gonna cook. Um, fat, I can burn quickly, so yeah. I think that what what's important here is not using too much of it, just enough to really coat that bread, um, and then getting your pan hot but not scalding and cooking it over a medium low heat. Um, and sort of you know taking your time. It is worth the couple extra minutes to make sure every bit of cheese is perfectly melted, but not no part of the exterior of the sandwich is burned. I think that's the trickery. So we're gonna use Havarti today, right? Which I think, like to your point, you know you can choose from so many different kinds of cheeses. I'm here with Arla, and, and this Havarti cheese is one of their best little sliced cheeses that are really pull. Really, it gives you a really mild, creamy taste. It pulls beautifully. So when you bite into the sandwich, it's gonna be like. You're gonna, you're gonna have that little string of cheese attached yeah, the way that like, oh, you remember it that, being. That like visual of just like the cheese coming apart. To exactly. But is it also important when you think about the extras that you add in to have a cheese that matches with that? Because just because you love a cheddar doesn't percent. mean it will go with pears. Or I think whatever. that's such such a good point, and I, I absolutely agree that you're gonna have to think about what are the little add-ons you're gonna do. And you know, for the most part, a cheese like a Havarti or a Fontina, really mild, creamy base, it's gonna go really well with nice with a ton of things. But if you're picking some Thing that's going to be a little bit smokier, you might want to go with a Gouda because that's going right. to complement the flavor there. Or you might want to go with a sharp cheddar if you're going to use something that's a little bit, um, a little bit more like bitey and acidic, like a like a jalapeno pepper mm -hmm. or something. So there are tons of fun ways to enjoy, uh, you know, different types of cheeses. That said, there really is no wrong way to make a right. grilled cheese. So use the cheese that do what you like. Use yeah. the cheese that uh, that you have readily on hand. So no grilled cheese police. <laughs> Maybe it's me. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's me. They're going to show um, up at people's doors. Excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. You did, did you really mayo. just use that that piece of that piece of uh, cheese with that combination of ingredients? Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm adding on these uh, caramelized onions. And one thing I will say is, you know, I know that you have a son similar in age to my son. Mm -hmm. And at seven months old, they keep you busy. you got very little time. So if you're going to spend half an hour caramelizing onions right. and making them delicious, do a big batch and then freeze whatever you have right. left over 
because you can use it. I use it in omelets. I use them in sauces and soups. It adds so much flavor, right? You know, right from the outset, and it maximizes the use of that time. Right. Then you can just pull them out later, and you're like, oh look, it's so fancy. Exactly. And I just did that a week ago. You better believe I put them on top of steaks before, and it looks like something that I took a really long time to make. Okay. And it's like, no, this was. This was done two weeks ago. Okay, it's perfect. Like, I have it. So I have those caramelized onions on top of the Havarti. I added a layer of these freshly sliced pears. And you're gonna when these heat up, they get so creamy and sweet. It's such a great way to enjoy that sweet savory combo. And then of course, yeah, you gotta go back cheese. with more cheese. And if you know what? You're trying to be a little bit lighter. We'll go with just one slice, one one slice on top of your cheese. And again, is the ratio important here? Like you don't want too many pears, too many onions, because then it stops being a grilled cheese. Well, not only does it stop being a grilled cheese, but it also won't stick together. Part of the the most important part with having cheese on top and bottom is so it can act like a glue that's going to hold your bread together with the pears and with the with the cheese and the caramelized onions all together. And remember, I have my mayonnaise on the outside of both sides of bread, and that goes into a warm but not scalding pan. And what I, what I also like to do, another little trick to make sure that the glue does stick together, is go ahead and put a heavy plate on top of them so it holds them down and seals them as they're melting slowly. I've got one that's already being done over here for you. And if we Magic. had a knife, I could slice into it for you. But maybe we'll just have to break maybe it. Maybe we can just yeah, rip it in Ready? half and get some. Oh my action. gosh! Oh, get in. Okay, please observe that. Yeah, it's perfect. It's called Arla cheese. And that is what <laughs> you need. And so, what are some of your other favorite ingredients to put into grilled cheese? I ask as I'm going to. Please get away with this, dig yeah. in. I, you know, I, um, you can find all different kinds of inspiration for different kinds of recipes, but basically it's what you have on hand. Some of the things that we have here is we basically took a BLT and a grilled cheese and mushed them together. What do you think, by the way? Is it delicious? <laughs> I love asking Wonderful. people I know, you're like, <laughs> questions while you. your hand is, <laughs> your mouth well, is I've full. got cheese in my mouth. It's mm -hmm. so great. Good stuff. It's amazing. Yeah, but because it's still the grilled cheese, it just has that extra little pop of flavor. Exactly, exactly. So we did that BLT and grilled cheese mashup. So it's grilled cheese with bacon and avocado on top. Or you can use a red pepper jelly, or you can use roasted red peppers with jalapeno. That's <laughs> mom in town right there. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Daphne. Really appreciate nice it. Nice to meet you. Thank you.